OK, let's look at the um, joystick options. This is the little tiny joystick printed circuit board. And you can see on the right hand side it says the words are ICSP at the top. And this is the programming pins, so you shouldn't need those in normal use. And I would leave those unpopulated, I wouldn't put any SIL pins in those. Although I have on one that I'll show you shortly, which I'm just using for prototype work. Because you can still insert the programmer into it just using the pins in the programmer connector. Just pushing them in and holding them in so that works perfectly well. If you're going to mount it in the steering wheel or something like that, you don't want the pin sticking out the back or the front. So that's the joystick and this is the orientation of it. Um, as if it would be mounted in the car. So you've got left, right, up, down. Now at the top here, we have two little tiny LEDs. This is the green LED and this is the red LED. So you want to have... At, um, access to those through whatever, wherever you choose to mount it so you can see those two LEDs and on the uh, left hand side here we have the various connections these are all identified in the um, schematic which I published earlier top pin here is ground the bottom pin here is plus 12 volts next one is plus 5 volts next one is data received by the device and Next one is data being transmitted by the device. Now if we just look on the back there is an important thing we have to note. Turn it this way so you can see. Oh, this way might be better. Now here, if you can just see it, we have a jumper called JP1. This is a solder jumper and um, for use in the insight in any configuration this should be soldered, this should be shorted, but for use in the HCH1 Civic this should be open because the Civic needs two separate lines, it needs the input and output for the data, whereas the insight all the communication takes place on one line which is the H line so that can be soldered together. So in the insight this should be closed, a little tiny blob of solder across those two little pads, and for the Civic it should be open. The Civic software is not finished yet but uh, it should be fairly straightforward to adapt what I already have to use with this new device. So we'll just go back to the front again. So that's the orientation, LEDs at the top, programming pins on the right hand side, which you shouldn't need, and the connection pins on the left hand side. Now you can put SIL pins into these at this side if you want, so you could then have an option of simply plugging uh, the joystick onto some onto a connector. I actually did that on my uh, prototype. I'm just going to find it. Here it is. This is the one I've done most of the testing on. This has actually got a knob on it, and I actually put seal pins on the ICSP pins, and I put seal pins on the um, input output lines purely because I wanted to keep my plugging it and unplugging it and testing it. But um, for a normal full install, I wouldn't bother using the pins, and I would solder the wires directly to the holes. So we'll go back to the this one here. So we've got a number of options. Um, you could put the joystick in one of these little tiny boxes. This is the smallest box that Hammond make and as you can see it fits quite nicely in there. So it would be easy enough to install it in there. Just cut out the holes on the back um, for so you can see the LEDs and that the joystick has full movement left, right, up and down, so you'd need a hole probably almost equivalent to that circular part there that you can see to get full movement through the case. And um, the back of that just clip fits on, four little screws, and you could have a piece of Velcro on there and just stick it where you want it, anywhere on your dash, etc. If you're going to do the steering wheel install, then you have to modify the clock spring, which has been documented on um, other posts I've made, so have a look at that. Now, as regards the OBD2 CNC connections, or the connections, let's, let's, what, let's talk about the direct connections first. So this is if you don't have an OBD2 CNC, and you're just going to plug the device directly into the OBD port. And you have the OBD plug, which you'll be familiar with. On the end of that, it only needs three wires. We have the black ground, the yellow signal wire, and the red which is plus 12 volts from the OBD socket. So on the joystick board itself, I want it the right way, 
we have ground at the top plus 12 volts at the bottom so that's the red and black wires and then the second one down is the data out so it would be that way connected that way if I get my one I did earlier on you can see you can just plug that into there if you decide to use the pins so that's the connections inside well, that's the connections at the joystick for the direct connection to the OBD port this is not via the OBD2 CNC so let's talk about the OBD2 CNC on the back of your OBD2 CNC you'll have a connector and it's, uh, I can't remember one. Uh, it's called I squared C and it's basically a spare connector jumper J4 and you can see how I've got these wires connected here this is for the joystick via the OBD2 CNC so we've got negative on the far right we've got plus 5 volts on, on the far left and the signal wire from the joystick goes to the second pin in from the right which is actually pin 3 now at the other end it is slightly different you remember I said at the bottom pin is plus 12 volt and the next pin up is plus 5 volts so in this case connecting the joystick directly to the OBD2 CNC you would use the second pin up here on this side for plus 5 volts input because the joystick can op operate on plus 12 volts or plus 5 volts and the other two connections at the top would be the same so in this example here you can see I've actually done that so this one has got ground signal and it's connected to the second terminal up which is plus 5 volts so that's the joystick connections to the OBD2 CNC you just need to update the firmware with the OBD2 CNC and uh, away you go now the three switches which you've seen before this is the simple option for people who don't want the joystick and these have to be connected to the OBD2 CNC and it's the same three connections on the uh, back same three pins so it's pin 1, pin 3 and pin 4 and we have on the back of these switches we have green wire yellow wire and a blue wire and I'll document the uh, uh, I think it says actually on the schematic exactly which goes to uh, goes to which there so just follow the schematic which I presented earlier on obviously one goes to ground one goes to the plus 5 volts and the one goes to the signal connection which is the third pin along pin 3 on J4 so that should be fairly straightforward right, I don't think there's anything else much to say at the moment I'm still just tinkering around with the uh, joystick software via the OBD2 CNC the joystick works fine in direct mode the joystick's 95% working uh, via the OBD2 CNC and the buttons work fine via the OBD2 CNC as you know so that's where we are at the moment I hope that uh, explains the joystick and um, a few of the options that come with it